flamingos. Have you ever felt trapped in a cycle of continuous hunger and food cravings and never feeling quite full or satisfied? Well, you're not alone. Many of us face this problem often when the more food we consume, the more we crave and never feel quite full or satisfied. What can cause this? Well, this might seem like a little detour, but stay tuned with me. I promise I'm gonna try to bring it around all full circle and try to simplify the complex scenario that involves insulin resistance. Insulin resistance itself is quite simple to understand. It is the condition where our body cells are not responding anymore to the insulin produced by our pancreas. Thus glucose from what we eat crowd the blood flow resulting in a diabetic condition. Insulin resistance appears to be caused by cellular inflammation which can be controlled by the fatty acid composition of our dietary intake. The human body is designed with numerous checks and balances in place to provide the optimal blood glucose levels and avoid any unnecessary upheavals. Nowadays, we have an excess of food everywhere. An insulin's primary task is to defend the body against any potential damage from excessive nutrient intake. All nutrients are, however, a little bit naturally inflammatory since their breakdown into other compounds can lead to increased inflammation. Cellular inflammation can disrupt insulin's work by disturbing the signaling pathways within the cell. The fatty composition in food is particularly important. Omega-6 and saturated fatty acids are the pro-inflammatory molecules, whereas Omega-3 fatty acids are the anti-inflammatory molecules, and it's very important for us to remember that distinction. Saturated fats can first cause inflammation in the hypothalamus of our brain, disrupting the signaling pathways of hormone insulin and hormone leptin that make us feel full and satisfied after a meal. As a result, our brain continues to send signal to our stomach to eat more because of the feelings of hunger and unfortunately, the vicious cycle of inflammation and insulin resistance continues. As a result, there is accumulation of excess calories which are stored away as fat in the adipose tissue. Again, omega-3 fatty acids in the diet can decrease inflammation within our hypothalamus. When there is excess fat in the body, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as the fat is safely stored away in healthy fat cells that respond in a healthy manner to insulin. Excess fat is not in, self, in itself dangerous or the cause of insulin resistance at all. As seen above, the origin of insulin resistance may start with inflammation in the hypothalamus that disrupt satisfaction signals increasing hunger and food intake, starting a cascade of events that go downhill from there. The primary choice of food storage are the fat cells in the adipose tissue. However, fat cells do not have an unlimited capacity to expand. When they expand uncontrollably, it results in inflammation of the fat cell. With ongoing toxicity in the fat cell, High levels of free fatty acids can leave the fat cell to enter the general circulation where they can be taken up by other organs such as liver and skeletal muscles. These organs also eventually develop insulin resistance. The liver cannot safely store large amounts of fat and it results in fatty liver disease. Skeletal muscle is a very important tissue for uptake of glucose and for storing energy. Physical activity can reduce insulin resistance in skeletal muscles and also increases the uptake of glucose without requiring the help of insulin. The amount and the composition of fatty acids in our diet can have a significant role in the modulation of insulin resistance. The take home message is that we wanna increase our omega-3 fatty acids and reduce the saturated fats as well as boost up physical activity. If you have enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. 
And thank you again for watching. See you next time.